Thanks for keeping it tuned to listener-powered KEXP 90.3 FM Seattle and KEXP.org. I'm DJ El Toro, and I'm very excited to welcome our special guest this evening, Colleen. Hi. <laughs> Will you favor us with some music? Of course. That's what I'm here for. Hooray! Thank you.
You're listening to Colleen on listener-powered KEXP, where the music matters. That was I'm Kin, and that song and all of the material this evening is featured on her new thrill jockey album, Captain of None. You're listening to Colleen on KEXP 90.3 FM Seattle and KEXP.org. Colleen is the recording project of French artist Cécile Schott. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, Your primary instrument, uh, the viola da gamba, is something that we see often in early music, but we don't see it a lot in contemporary music, especially Mm. sort of contemporary pop 
How did you discover the instrument? And could you explain to our listeners how uh, the way you play it is different from mm, its traditional yeah. playing? Well, originally I discovered the viola de gamba, like many French people, uh, through a French film called Tous les Matins du Monde, which was focusing on the life of Marin Marais and Saint Colomb, who were two important uh, viola composers from the Baroque era. At the time I was 16. Uh, I'm not from a musical family. I had just started playing the guitar, but you know I don't have any classical training, so it was you know, completely impossible that I would one day play that instrument. So it just stayed like a um, kind of remote dream. Uh, later on, um, I had become a musician. I had started to play the cello. Mm -hmm. And at one point I thought, well, who's to stop me playing the viola if I really want to? So I got one made, started playing it. It was um, a bass viola da gamba, which is like most of the violas that are seen by people for mm -hmm. a solo viola music. Later on, I got this one made. It's called a treble viola da gamba. And um, basically, at first, I didn't play it because I just couldn't <laughs> find how, how to play it. But afterwards, uh, I decided to uh, one day, I just thought, oh, why why, why not tune it uh, lower down? And, uh, and why not tune it like a guitar with the same intervals as a guitar? Because uh, I was interested in trying to find um, a kind of hybrid instrument of, of my own. And basically, that's how... I realized that it could sound like really great when finger picked, and from then on, I kind of developed my own approach to to playing it that way. Mm -hmm. The new album, Captain of None, I'm I'm absolutely smitten with it. There are there's some stylistic progression on this one. I believe you've been listening to dub reggae since you were a little girl, but that played a really big role in the composition of these songs. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I, as a child, uh, my parents got this tape full of uh, Lee Perry tunes. I think they had no idea what they were, you know, getting into <laughs> when they bought it. So basically, that was something that we listened to in the car as you know on long, uh, you know, road trips. And uh, subsequently, I didn't listen to dub or or Jamaican music until I was, I guess, in my early twenties, and I picked that up again at the time when there was, you know, lots of re-releases of, you know, uh, classic um, Jamaican albums in the, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. At the time, though, it didn't enter my own music because I think there was, uh, you know, I wasn't ready for it or it just wasn't, you know, there was no reason for it to have a specific influence on what I was doing. But um, in 2013, um, not sure how exactly, but... I really got into Jamaican music again, and this time it came right at the point when I really wanted to incorporate more rhythm and a kind of a, a sunnier sound, I guess, uh, compared to what I was doing before. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if I was going to be influenced by Jamaican music and dub production with an instrument like that, it, I was sure that I was not going to do a kind of, a, you know, lame pastiche you know like french woman trying to play jamaican music or something <laughs> so um so that's how you know it became like one of the main uh, forces uh, in composing this this new album mm -hmm. do you feel like that uh gave some additional structure and shape to the w the way the songs turned out yeah i think so uh, the great thing about jamaican music is that um i think the the premise from which it starts is is really modern and very relevant to contemporary music production which is you have a melodic cell and from then on given the interpreter and the producer it can turn into any number of different things so i think it helps you both to structure your song uh better i guess in a tighter way but also to be much more open in terms of experimenting and you know realizing that a song can take many shapes and it's interesting that uh you know they often kept those more extreme productions for dubs but you can it's interesting to try and incorporate that into what is the main song and not a dub version of it or something like that so is there room for a lot of improvisation in your live performance or are you at a point where you feel confident enough with with the cells in the songs that you can let yourself go for well, long periods there isn't that much improvisation because i'm actually happy with the way you know the they turned out on the album uh -huh. so basically most most of what i play i mean there is a little bit of, of improvisation given the fact that um uh, delay uh, delays react differently according to the room you're in because mm -hmm. depending on the PA they will catch more of the delay so you have to play with that that's the element of improvisation and obviously you know there's always that um, 
element of mistake that can happen, which can force you to do things a bit uh, differently. Uh, and then there is one song that I play as an encore where I go a bit crazy with the delay and there's more improvisation <laughs> in that. But other than that, it's actually pretty controlled because that's a, not an easy setup to, to master in terms of uh, you know all the loops going on and stuff. So... Sure. Uh, did you? I, I noticed you. You're playing the melodica on the new mm. album. Is that a new instrument for you? Uh, not really. It's the first time I have it on a real album. I did play it uh, back in 2003. I had one song, but that never made it to an album. And uh, I'm a big fan of Augustus Pablo, so it's kind of my uh, homage <laughs> <laughs> to him and just to the uh, you know what you can do with a seemingly childlike instrument, but you can turn it into you know, something else, I think. Well, it's so fun because it's so portable and it, and it has such a playful timbre to mm. it, too. Could we hear a couple more songs? Of course. <laughs> You're listening to Colleen on KEXP, where the music matters.
That's Soul Alphabet by Colleen here on KEXP. I believe this final selection is the title track from her new album, Captain of None, available now on Thrill Jockey Records. Still want to and how 
You've been enjoying a live performance by Colleen, featuring selections from her new album, Captain of None, out now on Thrill Jockey Records. It's a treat to have you in America, and I really appreciate you playing for our listeners well, tonight. Well, I'm really happy to, to have been able to do this. Thank well, you so much. Well, thank you for coming in. Thanks. <laughs> I'm DJ El Toro. You've got it tuned to listener-powered KEXP, 90.3 FM Seattle, and heard worldwide at kexp.org. Discover new music at listener-powered kexp dot org. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That was great. Thanks for coming in to videotape, guys. I didn't yeah. think I'd get videotape on a Saturday. Yeah. And by 